Delta State Government has made uh, the COVID-19 vaccination compulsory for every resident of the state. Charles Aniogo, the State Commissioner for Information, made this public shortly after the execution of the council, Executive Council meeting at Government House in Asaba. According to the Commissioner, the coronavirus and its effects on the state and country at large were the major topic for discussion at the meeting. Furthermore, he explained that residents should visit any of the vaccination points across the state to fulfill this obligation. Well, joining us live is Dr. Michael Mwoko. He's a senior special advisor to Delta State Governor. Thank you very much, Mr. Mwoko, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Um, so we see here that the vaccination has been made compulsory um, by the Delta State government. Is that not one way or the other in contradiction to the rights of the average person in your state? Um, thank you very much for that question. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking uh, His Excellency Senator Dr. Ifan Tokoa, the governor of Delta State, for creating an enabling environment for uh, the fight against COVID-19 in Delta State, and to also thank um, the entire COVID-19 team for a job well done. Uh, talking about uh, um, uh, making it uh, mandatory for all residents of the state to be vaccinated is not in any way a violation of their human rights, etc. You'll agree with me that uh, as far as COVID-19 is concerned, uh, it is important for us to understand that no one has a right to infect others with COVID-19. And no one is safe until everyone is safe. Now, uh, if you look at um, activities that lend credence to the fight against COVID-19, right from the first wave and the second wave, uh, that was before the vaccines were developed, we were focusing uh, more on the non-pharmaceutical intervention against uh, uh, the control you know, of the uh, spread of COVID-19 and um, down to the moment that the vaccines were developed it now became imperative for everyone uh, to get vaccinated so as to be able to guarantee protection uh, against COVID-19. Now if you look at um, the uh, global scale and of course the, um, uh, the situation with the COVID-19 you will come to the irresistible uh, conclusion that the vaccination program is germane uh, to ending the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, uh, we are seeing a situation whereby different variants, new variants of the virus are currently on rampage among the unvaccinated population and also making it, um, in, you know, to become a problem, a real problem, a huge problem even for the vaccinated population. I totally understand no. that, but I, let me just come in there. I totally understand. It is a serious thing. It is, I mean, the virus is coming up with different strains, but are there no better ways that the state government can get people to be more open to vaccinations than ordering them? Because, of course, when the people... Don't forget that there are people with all kinds of conspiracy theories out there. How do you convince them that there is no, no killer um, vaccine out there if you are not coming at them with a sledgehammer? Could there not be better ways of encouraging people to take the vaccination instead of making it outrightly compulsory and making it seem forceful? You see, um, the approach that we're adopting is a holistic approach. Uh, before now, uh, we have been carrying out this uh, uh, advocacy and sensitization program on the need for the people to uh, understand the essence of uh, you know, the vaccination program and, of course, get vaccinated. But you'll also agree with me that we have been faced with this challenge of hesitance on the part of the people uh, to, you know, taking this vaccine because of uh, these conspiracy theories here and there, you know, if you like. But again, it is actually militating against the vaccination program. And so it became imperative for the government order to adopt a more stringent measure to be able to encourage members of the public to get vaccinated. Yes, we're aware that some will say that it is a ploy to inject microchip into the body uh, so as to be able to monitor the human race, etc. You know, we are faced with all of these conspiracy theories. But you see, how long can we continue uh, to allow a window uh, for these conspiracy theories to thrive and therefore undermining the vaccination program and therefore creating an unsafe environment for the people? You see, now that the vaccines are out, I think it is a very important window for the people 
uh, to be able to avail themselves of the opportunity to be vaccinated. And so our message is very clear to the people. Now, whilst the uh, uh, COVID-19 vaccination team are working across the 25 local government areas, uh, with a view to uh, uh, you know, uh, ensuring that they are valuable and of course the vaccines are valuable for the people to get vaccinated, we have equally encouraged the local immunization officers and the entire team across the local government areas to move from one community to the other. In other words, they are now taking uh, the vaccines to the people so as to be able to encourage people to get vaccinated. But it's still not enough. You see, during the first and the second wave, uh, uh, sorry, during the first uh, phase of the vaccination program, wherein we didn't have enough vaccines, etc., then it became, you know, uh, pretty difficult to, be able to really convince the people. But now during the second wave, more vaccines are now available. And since the vaccines are available, then it is important for the people, you know, to, you know, take these vaccines. If you look at, you know, the... Uh, uh, the number of persons that have been vaccinated in Africa, you realize that is a far cry from what is expected. Africa has a population of about 1.3 billion people, and just about 3% of this population have been vaccinated. That is a far cry from what is expected. Now, if you just oppose this with what is happening at the global you know, stage, you will agree with me that, for instance, uh, the United States have recorded about 53% of vaccination of its adult population. Uh, then uh, the United Kingdom have achieved about 80% you know, of, uh, you know, vaccination of this adult population. Israel has attained herd immunity, etc. But again, it's also a huge concern. It's not enough for the West or Western countries to adopt measures to be able to protect uh, themselves from COVID-19, where, where you have a situation whereby in Africa, just about 3% of its population will be vaccinated. The implication is this. If more vaccines are not made available in Africa, and if Africans are not encouraged to take the vaccine, there are indications that more variants of this virus you know, will be on rampage and come back to even hunt, you know, the Western countries, etc. You, so you, you actually beat me to my last question and you helped me answer it because I was going to ask about, you know, what we're doing to speed up the process apart from trying yes, to so. convince people. But then yes. we also know that the AstraZeneca vaccination, I'm sure you know this, um, yes. has this an expiry date on it, which is September 2021. Is that what you have, or do you have the Moderna, which still has more time? The Moderna, time? yes, yes. The Moderna. See, uh, when we began the second phase of the vaccination program, precisely on the 26th of August in 2021, we didn't only receive the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines, we also received the Moderna vaccines. And as I speak to you, because of the tremendous progress that we're recording in Delta with respect to this vaccination program, we have achieved a record of about uh, 60,000 doses you know, of uh, uh, both the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines and, of course, the Moderna vaccines in the second wave of the vaccination program. This figure uh, represents a, a, a much more better, um, you know, uh, vaccination record compared to what we experienced during the uh, first phase of the vaccination program, which is an indication that, you know, more vaccines are now available. And from the assurances that we are getting, of course, from the West, wherein uh, the production of vaccines have been escalated with a view to ensuring that more population of the world get these vaccines. There are indications that in no time, of course, more vaccines will be shipped you know, to Africa. From the records that we're tracking, uh, Western countries are beginning to uh, produce more vaccines. And we understand that by October or November, there are about, about 2 billion vaccines will be made available. So why stop piling these vaccines where uh, uh, you have a situation whereby some of you know, the regions of the world, particularly the African region, have not achieved more than 3% of uh, vaccination of its population. So, Well, that's a conversation however, that we will however, have another day, of course, of the politics around, you know, the vaccination. But I want to say thank you very much, uh, Dr. Michael Walker, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, and thank you for the efforts you're making towards helping us to drive this vaccination program. Let us get vaccinated, and together we can stop COVID-19. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.